people, welcome to day three of ceramic measuring class. I am measuring the approximate volume of my coil pot so that I can transform my coil pot into a measuring cup. I'll know I've got it when I've utilized glaze, a type of paint used for pottery, to indicate the ideal measuring cup size for my coil pot. So your coil pots are now done being fired in the kiln, so they are very fragile if you drop them they will break so when you're walking around with them make sure you're holding them with two hands you're looking where you're going you're not running all of those things they will break if you drop it we are going to turn these into measuring cups so we need to figure out what you want the measuring cup to be when you're baking and cooking and such you can have things in your instructions that say you need a quarter cup of sugar for instance or a third cup of flour so on and so forth so you will just need to decide what you think this measuring cup would be good for would it be good for a quarter cup a third cup a half cup or one full cup so we're gonna do what's called guess and check so you just look at your measuring cup and you look at the measuring cups the real measuring cups and you look and compare do you think this much would fit into here do you think this much would fit into here probably not so I probably don't need to try out the one cup okay I have enough measuring cups for everybody to use for this experiment if you are a puppy dog you can get out the measuring cups all right if you are the alligator you can get out the ceramic um, coil pots and also puppy dogs, if you could get out the water from your water and paintbrush caddy, that would be amazing. Just get the two cups of water. Now, if these cups of water are very dirty, we can switch them out for some clean water right now. Now that we have our clean water, alligators, can you please get everybody a pencil? Okay. Fabulous. So now we can get started with our experiment. I'm going to try out the quarter cup because my coil pot is quite small. You can pick any of your measuring cups from your little pile to try out. And we're just going to fill that cup with the water. And now it's time to see if we were right. So you're going to pour the water from your measuring cup into your coil pot. Okay, mine went right up to the brim. Okay, mine went right up to the brim of the top, the lip of it. If yours did not though, however, you, well, let's all take our water and pour it back in to the cup. Now, let's say mine went up about halfway. I can still use this as a quarter measuring cup, okay? All I would need to do is draw a line where the edge of the water was when I put this in here all the way around to know how to where to fill it to if I wanted to use it as a measuring cup for that. Okay, if yours went all the way up to the brim, you get to just hang out for a second. You don't need to do this step. If yours did not go all the way up to the brim, what you can do is if you want to try using a different measuring cup to see if it will fill it up all the way, you can. Or if you've made your decision for how, what measuring cup you want this to be, but it just goes down a little bit too low. Like I said, you can just draw a line to where it ends. So we're just going to pretend that that's a quarter of a cup just so I can give this demonstration. Okay. So let's say that that was a quarter of a cup. Where my water ends is where I'm gonna go in with my pencil and draw a line all the way around. Again, mine ended up being perfectly one quarter cup, but we're just pretending for the sake of the demonstration. Okay, I'm gonna pour this out and that's the line that we're pretending that the quarter cup goes up to okay so if you guys need to draw a line go ahead and do that okay now when you go to glaze or paint this is the special paint that we're going to use for clay it's called glaze 
you are going to paint the bottom up to that line one color, okay? Because this pencil is going to disappear in the kiln. So you're going to paint from here all the way up to your line one color, any color you want. And then the rest of it will be your second color, whatever color you want. So most of you are going to have two colors inside your measuring cup. You're going to have the first color go all the way up to the pencil line and the second color will do the rest. Now the outside of your measuring cup, there are no instructions for how you glaze that or paint that you, whatever you want out here. Underneath there is a rule. You do not get to glaze this bottom at all. It will stick to the shelves in my kiln, which is that giant oven. If you paint glaze underneath this and I put it back in the kiln, cause they're all going back in the kiln after this step to go through a one more firing, it will get stuck there. So you have to make sure that this is cleaned off and there's nothing down here. Okay. So I am going to pause it there and let anybody who needs to catch up with their line drawing, go ahead and get started pausing that here. Now for the rest of us that have their measuring cup, it just happens to perfectly go to the brim. We get it easy. We don't have to draw a line. We are just going to know that it goes all the way up to that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and now we actually get to do our glazing. So we can put our measuring cups away. If you're the um, puppy dog, you can put these back. Okay. And we are also done with our pencil. So alligators can put these away. And now let's talk about the glaze a little bit. So this is what our glaze containers look like. Some of them are going to be just perfect. For instance, I think this one, no, that one's a little dry. When you open these, you're going to open them over top your messy tray because little pieces of dry glaze will come out as you can see here. Okay. This one is pretty much like perfect. It's thick, kind of like a thick pancake batter. So it's like moving around, but it's moving slowly. That's a really nice one. They're not all going to be like that. Okay. Some of them are going to be too dry. Well, this one's really wet. We'll talk about that in a minute. Look at this one. Okay. This one is dry, right? Like it's not moving around at all. So for these, you can just put a little bit of water in it and it will have like kind of a dry smell. You just shake it up for a while probably even longer than this. And once it's all shaken up, it will be a little easier to work with. You can see how it's coming out now. You see that right there? How it's moving around like that. Okay. There is still a dry trunk in there, but we can shake that up and it will get better. So that's what you do. Here we go. Now you can see that's what you do. If it's a little too dry is you just put some water in it and then we'll be good. Now, if you put a little bit too much water in it and it ends up getting really thin like this, that's okay. That's fine. You are just going to have to paint, um, multiple layers. So I'll kind of show you here. So see how that's very thin. That's okay. It will dry really fast and then you can just put another layer on it. So you'll just have to layer the thin ones a little bit more and that's totally fine. Okay. So you can still use those. Um, you are going to want to put multiple layers of your glaze on it. You're going to want to go over the whole thing with the layer and then it will be dry. And then you can go over the whole thing with another layer and that will dry three layers is what I recommend. And now let's talk about what it will look like. Um, after you've glazed it, it will look something like this. So, um, obviously not this project, but this is what the glaze will look like. It'll be a pastel color and notice how I don't have any of the clay showing through except for on the bottom, right? None of it is this color except for on the bottom. It's all been glazed and I've done three layers of glaze on all of these. So this is ready to go and it's pastel like that, but then I'm going to put it back in the kiln and it's going to go through another firing and it's going to come back out and it is going to look way different. You probably remember this from years past if you've um done my lessons before it will come out really shiny and glossy and feel really really nice to touch this is with three layers of the yellow so look how it starts it starts as a pastel yellow 
but then when it goes into the kiln it comes out really bright and that happens for every single glaze so here's what the yellow will look like this is what the red will look like this is the white this is the brown and again this is three layers on each it's not going to be this shiny and feel this nice and be this glossy unless you do your three layers and if it's a thin glaze even more layers than that it won't be so nice to touch here's the red here is the black and these are the different greens so this is the ivy green this is the other green this is raspberry this is the purple, wisteria purple, and this is again white. Okay. This is the ivy green. This is the raspberry whip. Okay. Here is the Tahiti blue, wisteria purple, and this is the other green that I don't remember what it's called. This one must have more layers than this one because this one's not as dark. Wisteria purple, and then just like the variety of colors, yellow, green, red, Tahiti blue. So I'm going to leave these here so you can kind of see what they look like after they're glazed. Okay, so you'll know what it will look like. I'm going to let you guys just go to town painting your um, pottery. Okay.
Okay. Oh, and one more thing. Um, just so you don't forget what your measuring cup, what the um, like volume is for your measuring cup, you can paint it on there. So for instance, this, once I finish glazing it, I'm going to then at the very end with the black, I'm going to write one over four. So I remember that it is the quarter cup that this measuring cup is going to be. So if you ended up making yours a one half cup, then you would wanna probably write that somewhere on it, right? Okay, that would be my advice so that you remember and you can actually use it when you um, are baking, okay? All right, you guys, that is it for this. I'll pause this here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.